Aloha everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. We have a very special two chord jam that we'd love if all of you grabbed your ukuleles, tuned them up, and joined us. The chords for this two chord song is actually going to incorporate our D minor 7, which is starting from the top string would be 2, 2, 1, 3. Next chord will be the E minor 7, which all you have to do is move it up two steps or a whole step right here to your third fret. And that's going to be four, four, three, five. Another alternative to these chords is if you either hold a D minor seven, which might be easier for some of you, you can bar it on the fifth fret. And the E minor seven will be two frets up or a whole step up, like so, on the seventh fret. So D minor seven here, E minor seven on the third fret, bar on the fifth for the other D minor seven and bar on the 7th fret for the E minor 7. You can also do this too. Oh yeah, that's another one. If your fingers are nimble enough. <laughs> <laughs> so for all the advanced play players, you can take this A minor 7 or C6 position, the same shape, move it up to the 7th fret, and then you have our D minor 7. If you move it up to the ninth fret, you have the E minor 7. So choose either one of those positions and join us together in this jam. We'll see you at the end. <laughs>
<laughs> yes. Awesome. Those chords would make a good samba too. Yeah, you could do like. <laughs> Seven minutes later. <laughs> yeah, you know. You know what else would be really good? Reggae. just goes on <laughs> or you can play it in like different time signatures it's crazy like for those of you who are watching at home you can change the feeling and overall sound of the song just by messing around with like time signatures and different styles even if it's only two chords, you can play the two chords in many different rhythms and you'll get a whole lot of different options as far as feels and sounds and tones. So today we're going to be featuring 10 great ukes under a thousand dollars. And these guys are going to be jamming out two chords for uh, at least five different pairs of these <laughs> so it'll be fun what do you guys got first for us these are the new px models from kala and it, this one features as a wood that was used from a very popular model over the years called the eby in this case is the eby t for tenor size um, but the px series features a few things that weren't available um, prior um, to the release of these models and as you can see the one of the biggest things that wasn't available in a lot of the other models from Kala is an armrest um, most times these types of features are available in a lot of like cayenne custom builds um, and you've seen them you know in on a lot of the ukuleles that we featured um, on our website um, this is the PX EBYT um, all ebony for the front back and sides this one comes in a gloss finish this is a laminated model but for a laminated model it sounds really nice it maintains that really nice um, signature warm sound that um, the EBYT is known for and with a bit more um, the gloss finish really brings out the grain from the ebony we have a rosewood bridge and fingerboard as well and some really nice appointments um, you got some binding here with a really nice white decal strip um, going along the sides um, as well as the rosette. These come with the ratio um, tuning keys. Uh, these are gear tuners. They're made out of, they're actually plastic um, materials, but the reason for these is that they actually reduce the weight of the overall headstock and they hold their tune very well, especially when you compare these tuners to the old friction tuners that rarely stay in tune for very long and yeah so check out this column model um, this goes for about like the mid 200s and it's a great um, great model to have and a great one to add to your collection as well let's hear it all right
Yeah. The one you have, Corey, almost looks the same. Yeah, so this is like Thailand's, this is the, the wood of Thailand. It's so like their mahogany. Kind of, or their rosewood. Or their rosewood. Yeah. Or their rosewood. Rosewood. yeah. Uh, this is the uh, PX, or the KA PX MACT UVWXYZ Z. model. <laughs> <laughs> the longest skew I've ever seen in my life but uh, this is maca wood and it comes from Thailand very interesting wood green it's not like woods you've seen before like it looks almost like ebony but when you look deeper the overall structure it's more like ebony and zero coat there's another model zero coat that's available which is beautiful as well this one just a different color different look a little lighter um, same features great sound um, yeah, check it out. Some of that kind of like thumpy punch, like some of that is the Aquila strings. Yeah, like if you if true. you put a set of fluorocarbons on these, you might um, get a little bit, and, and it would be a little bit more of the crystal clear trebles and stuff. I, I like to just depends come up on with what these, you like. These obscure funk band names, thumpy punch. Oh <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> <a good one. laughs>
Oh, we didn't even uh, talk about what chords it was. Oh, I'm pretty sure they. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're wondering what chords we were playing, G there were two chords in involved: G major seven, which is kind of like a full bar with one open string on the top. It's a three-fourths bar, and then you're gonna move that finger down all the way till you're only covering the A string for C major seven. I always think of waiting in vain. Yeah, or actually, you were kind of referencing it a touch. I was playing. Um, Almost like, what is it, Catching a Wave? Oh, yeah. And then that you one started too. playing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then it was like... But it's funny, because Catching a Wave is in... Uh, it's in D, D right? Yeah. Because of when you're doing that I, and I see your hands like move around like there's like other like little maybe passing chords or um, different versions of those chords that you'll sometimes throw in mm -hmm. like what are a couple like instances where for me it's like I like to make try to make use of as much open strings as I can and you know add them into the chords that I'm playing when, when I get the chance and when it's also appropriate so um, for example, like when we were playing that jam with me and Corey, we were playing G major 7 and C major 7. Well, there's other types of chords that you can play which are called substitutes. And, you know, those are very awesome to learn. I highly suggest you, you know, maybe looking up a couple videos or asking your teachers and instructors about this kinds of stuff because it's very useful. For example, instead of playing a G major 7 like this, sometimes I'll play the E minor 7. Um, sometimes I'll even play like, you know, a G major seven like this, uh, which also works for a B minor. And then, then you got this, and then you got this. These are all just base basics of all those chords is this. And then when I go into C, sometimes I'll play variations of the same chord, C major seven, and then add in maybe other substitutes like a C six. Of course, you can play normal C if you choose to. But it really helps spice it up. It does. Keep it fresh. Like, substitute chords to me is kind of like what you said. It's like spices. You're adding a little bit more flavor to enhance the overall experience of the song, whether if you're playing lead or if you're, you know, accompanying someone. All right, let's talk about these instruments. Yeah. So we have a couple of um, instruments designed by Leo Lani. Um, this is one of my favorite models overall, whether if it's a, a soprano, tenor, in this case we have a concert. Model number for this is the C85G, which stands for a concert mango and a gloss, kind of like more like a semi-gloss finish, and which is really nice. Um, Leo Lani makes really good instruments because they have really nice volume, good tone, and overall, you know, they have a good value too. So if you're looking for a really good, affordable sounding instrument, these are, you know, some to consider. And of course, if you're looking for something exotic that reminds you of a tropical island, especially on your trip to Hawaii, you know, mango wood is a, a really good choice. And they're priced so well. Do you yeah, guys know offhand? <laughs> Like one, 165? Yeah, 165 or 169 you know, or something like that. You know, since we're, you know, doing this uh, video, uh, the under 1,000, I feel like we should have referenced also the prices of the first two callas. Yeah, those are 250. We actually... We oh, did you? Yeah, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. cool, cool. And then, uh, I want to mention, like, I always I always bring it up with Leolani, your, uh, it's your cousin. Oh, Kelly. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> What's and that? Our Kili families is, are, uh, are related. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Are you related to the, the government? Oh, yeah. house, I think. Uh, He's a pretty the, good player, the Pinoy, too. Yeah, Pinoy yeah. Powered. <laughs> yeah, Kaylee is one of the main dudes at Leolani Kumu. Yeah. If you ever stop by their office or the factory, or even them, you see them. You see him there. And yeah, you know, even awesome. like wood bindings, like that, that takes longer. You have to bend the and it's fairly clean too it's like yeah. you don't feel any gaps or spacing or you know 
they've made significant improvements over the last couple of years. I'm really impressed. It's been super consistent, too. Yeah. I mean, we sell a ton of these in the store. I mean, these yeah. are like totally a different level of instruments that they're producing, you know, like 15 years ago. Yeah. Because you know, like Leolani has always been a, a staple, I guess, especially in Hawaii. A lot of people, you know, were playing Leolani's and they still do to this day. I remember when I was getting started, it was either Kala. Lani Kai and then Leolani came out of nowhere. I was just like, man, these things are awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember that like a thin body. Speaking of thin body, it was like there was a thin body model that was like this. I think it was modeled after this too. Wasn't it like an African zebra? There was a zebra one and then there was like a some mahogany one that I was just like, mm. man, this is this is pretty badass. It's really good. That one is in Hawaiian Koa. So Kumu and Leolani, they're the same company, but they use Kumu for their coal wood line. And it's a laminate, but this is actual coal wood used from the Big Island. So it's a real laminate. <laughs> well, it's, it's also great because... It's real like, steel. <laughs> but, like, uh, there's not a whole lot of companies that offer like laminated coal or coal instruments around that price range. It's too. hard. Coal is expensive. Yeah. So... This is the thin body tenor, koa, uh, semi-gloss, thin body. It's a thin body, but you'd be surprised at how much volume it is. It doesn't sound thin. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, this is the TF-72A, the satin koa tenor, thin body. Let's get individual samples. <laughs> you still gonna teach me that? <laughs> it's all there's like 500 diminished chords in there. I forgot the, what the rest is, but.
Funk Song Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think anybody would catch up. That was a uh, wait for the moment. <laughs> All right, let's keep keep it rolling. What do we got next? Let's see, we got I know we know it. I know we know it. Yep, got some.
arpeggios? No, I didn't do any arpeggios. D minor, but you can make use of these these notes. But when you get to the D, like on the fifth string of the A string, then you can play D minor. Yeah, that's my that's and my go-to scale. <laughs> Always that flatted. That's like when I was doing that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I was doing that. What was that? That's kind of like a typical ukulele. Lick right there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, teach that one real quick. <laughs> There's many ways you can do this technique and basically what I'm doing is I'm mainly doing it on the A string and I have um, two fingers placed, one placed on the 3rd fret and one will be placed on the 7th fret. So I'm going to start from the 7th fret and I'm going to pluck this note and then after I do that I'm immediately going to pull off with my left hand. So you're going to pick, pull off. So you're going to hear that open A, and then I'm going to come back up with my thumb to hit the A again. So you get this sound. So it's pick, pull off, up with your thumb. Down, pull off, up. Now this that's where it gets really tricky because um, over the years I developed this technique with my thumb, but if that's really difficult for you to do, you can also do it with your pointer finger, or um, you can rotate between these two. For example, so you can go and then from here, from the 7th fret, I'll go to the 4th fret and repeat that same picking pattern. So remember, pick, pull off, upstroke or pick again and then go to the 4th fret, repeat that same pattern. So then you get so. Sweet. <laughs> Try it again. comes in. <laughs> Feel the angst. <laughs> so you guys are excited, huh? You got a a shipment coming in tomorrow. Yep. With yes. A whole lot of newy newies. So we are going to be receiving a new batch of brand new instruments um, from our Anui Nui factory, and we're really, really excited to showcase all of these models and share with all of you folks. So do expect um, some 
announcements, newsletters, and more sound samples of the upcoming instruments that will be arriving very soon. But yeah, let's let's, let's talk about these ones. Corey, what you got? This is the T30 tenor, all solid mahogany, top back and sides on the Hawaiian Dream Series. Um, they all come strung with fluorocarbon strings, which adds a lot more clarity, brightness, volume to the instrument. So it's a lot easier on your fingertips because the strings are not as thick as other ones uh, or other string manufacturers out there. And uh, yeah, very sweet sound. got ebony bridge fretboard a new and new rainbow man up on a headstock and uh yeah this is a very lightweight instrument it's very easy to hold and handle very easy to play as well so check it out It's a nice ring yeah. Yeah. to the for oh. mahogany. It's, uh, it's nice a great voice. option under 300. What uh, what do you have? So I have a another new model that was introduced uh, this year along with the Hawaiian Dream Series. Uh, this is the new Koa model. This is actually a concert size, and this line is called the AKK. And these have similar features to the AMM series, um, which features a really nice gloss finish. Uh, you get all of the bells and whistles pretty much on this ukulele for a great price. Slotted headstock. This is all Hawaiian koa for the front, back, and sides. Mahogany neck. And a nice rosewood um, bridge and fretboard. Radius fretboard as well. Um, Buffalo bone nut and saddle, and a great value at eight forty nine for a Hawaiian koa concert ukulele. The tenor is going to be the AKK three, and that one goes for eight ninety nine. So be on the lookout for these. We'll be getting more in stock very soon.
Next six. Um, Bono. Two chords. Two chords. This one is going to involve the. Well, I'm playing a baritone, so. But if you're wondering what these two chords are, it's going to be your F major seven. Um, on baritone, it looks like this, almost like a B flat, or you can play regular F. Okay, and all we're going to do is we're going to take that F and slide into a G. And then back to that F. Tenor. And that's what it looks like on tenor. So we'll go to F. And then go to a G. And then back to an F. There you go. Now follow along with us. <laughs> you like that F with the open G? You can do that too. F with an playing, open uh, G. One of the chords we played earlier. <laughs> there you uh, go. E, e minor, minor seven. seven. Or a G6. Or G6. Yeah. <laughs> think of that. Return of the Mac. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to find a video of this guy playing it at NAMM. Not this guy. He's actually a very well-known guitarist. I just totally <laughs> forgot his name. Uh, anyways. first this is the poto atdcr and it stands for acacia tenor deluxe with the cedar top and the deluxe features a nice gloss finish on the body in the past it used to come with a gloss neck now they do a satin neck which is nice and smooth easy to navigate the fretboard your hands don't get stuck to the back of the neck which is great and it features one of my favorite, I'm just going to say it's my favorite 
soundboard wood. This is cedar, and it's a uh, it's a wood that never fails. Well, never fails to make me happy. At least when I play a, a cedar top instrument. So, um, on the there's an ATCR, ATDCR, and the SP models. Any of the models above those models and above feature a radius fretboard. So, you know, those who have a hard time doing bar chords and stuff, to make it a lot easier for you. So, yeah, this is the Pono ATDCR. It comes in at 662. Very good deal. All solid wood. Pono uses only solid wood. And uh, one of the main features that I, I really appreciate. A lot of people say it's not really needed. Um, I think it's very crucial, especially for the longevity of the, of the instrument. Um, you never know how the neck can, you know, how it's going to be long term if you develop a back bow or um, upward bow. There's a truss rod in here in case you need to adjust the neck, either for like on the fly action adjustment or just you know, bringing the back, the neck back, the back neck. That's what to say. I wish my neck had a truss rod. <laughs> <laughs> we so do. We go just, in there and tweak it. Yeah, we just need a chiropractor to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah, ATDCR. Oh, you have to do a sound test. That's right. Nice and warm. These are the Ko'olau Alohi strings, which is a monofilament. It's higher in density than the standard nylon strings. I think yours has nylon on them, yeah? Or are those Alohis as well? Uh, this is good if you want a brighter sound over standard nylon. Um, yeah, it gives you better clarity, a little bit more volume. It's not overly bright, which is, uh, which is really nice. Matches this instrument very well. Um, the Aho set sounds really good on here. Yeah. I like to just put that on almost there. Oh, the Aho set? Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's either the Aho, you logic. <laughs> Even Pepe strings sound nice on there. Yeah. Yeah. Baritone. Yeah, it's time to have a very good time. Like, give it a good <laughs> shake. I forgot. <laughs> with free percussion instruments <laughs> <laughs> so i have here the pono mbd which is the mahogany baritone deluxe and it pretty much features the same same stuff as the normal md or mb um, except for it comes in a nice beautiful gloss finish uh, this will be sort of out of reading i mean steel for what you're getting at 551 you get a really good sounding all solid wood baritone and um, these come with truss rods just as the tenor ukuleles do too and the baritones um, are also available um, in the deluxe series as far as like the base models in mahogany mango and acacia so these are great solid well-built instruments and they'll last for <laughs> a really long time and they sound great Good addition to your ukulele arsenal. I think it's the same one we have on the website right now. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Um, what's the serial on that one? 
32-17. Yeah, this yeah, is 32 I was, seven, I was like, wait, I think I just saw that one. one. <laughs> Anyways. So if you would like the one, that's listed on the website. Go ahead. <laughs> The Aho baritone set that we did we talk about that last time? Yeah, I just I have to like make new labels and stuff. Uh, but. but that sounds really good on, on the yeah. Mahogany baritone. Yeah, I mean, I, mean I, I, just, I like the Alohis too on on baritone. I think, uh, yeah, I, I think I like the Aho set a little bit better just for the articulation, but I always liked. Pono baritones. Yeah, it's a sweet sounding yeah. baritone. It's not. I mean, I'm a proud owner of a Pono baritone. Yeah, the rosewood cutaway. <laughs> yeah, I got one top. of like the old models, and it, oh, that thing sounds good. Rosewood, spruce top. I mean, cutaway. It reminds me of Holly's baritone, his Kamaka one. Oh, no, his one is really nice too. I think he has like a um, 19 inch. Same like Uncle. That's Benny's. right. Yeah. showcase the beautiful sounds of the Pono MBD. Our best best selling line of ukes and almost all of them I'd say the majority of them come in under a thousand dollars. So check out that entire line. All great ukes in this uh price range. Let's go next to Romero Creations. Two chord jam. Two chord jam. With the chords, bro. So this one's pretty basic. We got a D minor seven. So you're going to play a D minor and you're going to add your ring finger on the third fret of the bottom string, making it a minor seventh. And then next chord, very easy, C major seventh. You're just going to use one finger, the second fret of the bottom string. That's all she wrote.
Oh yeah, the second chord is just this, and then <laughs> immediately I play this chord, <laughs> which is the same thing. It's the so, same thing, but it's... Um, I like to use this, the staircase chord, <laughs> which is also C major Stairway seven. to C. <laughs> and I, I like to use this because playing that kind of funky stuff, it's easier to mute the entire chord mm, yeah. instead of the... Pointer, second fret, bottom string, middle, third fret, second string, ring finger, fourth fret, third string, and then pinky on the fifth fret of the top string. Works really well with low G tuning. You can use that as like a, like if you play like a bossa nova kind of thing. interesting uh, how a lot of the two chord jams that work great are like a step apart from each other yeah it's really interesting because it because you're basically i mean you're substituting i mean d minor is taking the place of the, like what you what normally would be like a like an f yeah and you're treating it more as a four it's like the if, if the f was if the f was in the bass eight it was cool smooth and <laughs> So you can also use this instead of the D minor 7 too. Yeah. Because it's just a one note different. I like doing this just just to kind of irritate people. <laughs> <laughs> Bar the fifth fret of the <laughs> top three strings, technically. And then you just have your pointer up here on the second fret. Yeah. just like a chord and like you know the the bass is a a common one but if you you can take like any other of the strings too and just start moving them up or down one <laughs> yeah, by one yeah. just playing around that way i get super cool like chords yeah cool just sounds weird voicings <laughs> i like using this whatever this chord is <laughs> First person to tell us wins a free set of Uke Logic strings. <laughs> the expensive Joel Logic show. Wait, those are too expensive. <laughs> free set of Oasis strings. <laughs> you mean Aquila? <laughs> what? Oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Angle. Let's go even more. Yeah. Oh, D'Ethereal. <laughs> <laughs> is that what? That's a Shade or? I think so, yeah. No? <laughs> and that's just, uh, yeah, if you, if you play the second inversion of a G, um, a G7, seven. and you just move that top bass to a. Uh, the second fret on the... That's a good exercise.
That's a wrap. <laughs> All right. Romero's. Talk about him. The famous tiny tenor. One of the... You, you know, the, the tenor almost looks smaller than the concert. <laughs> That's because it's called a tiny tenor. Yeah. <laughs> What's even more confusing is the STC model. I mean, it's not confusing anymore, but um, that's a really good model as well. This one is a very ergonomic tenor if you're looking for something very comfortable to play. Uh, it's more along the lines of a super concert uh, because of the size of the body. It's not quite... Actually, the right. lower bout width is tenor. The same as a tenor. Yeah, right? yeah. It's like, Just feel-wise, it feels you know a bit yeah. smaller, but... Um, I like this edge here where, like, if you're holding it like this, just, mm, yeah, it's, like, really easy to, like, it's comfortable. Just falls in place and, and, like, your hand doesn't stick out as much, you know, as, like, with the figure eight. Yeah. Because of the, was it the upper part, right? Yeah. Like, this just more, like, oval fits. Uh, all solid mahogany, tiny tenor, beautiful abalone. Rosette, well done. Pearl fret dots. The this is a Daniel Hole model, and um, yeah, one of the one of the most popular ones from Romero Creations. Uh, one of my favorites for sure. It's come kind of strung low G with fluorocarbons. This is the UT two set, and uh, sounds good on a bunch of other ukuleles. I like this string set. Not a big fan of clear fluorocarbons but if i had to choose it it would be this or the olives they're oh they're they good just, they sound good on really nice almost everything tiny tenor all solid mahogany Smooth, just yeah, smooth, smooth operator, Chris. smooth <laughs> operator, coast to coast, <laughs> coast to coast. So these concert models are fairly new from Pepe, and um, they sound tenor esque. Oh yeah, I mean, one of the cool things about like the shape of these concerts is, I mean, just look at the the size of the body. It's a little bit more wider in width. Um, and also deeper in depth. And what this does, it creates more of a richer, deeper tone. And it's the type of sound that you would probably expect least from a concert, especially because of its size. But what this instrument provides you with is a lot more depth and more versatility as far as like what type of songs you could play on it because of the type of tone that you get from here. Um, all of the good things that you would expect from a Romero Creations. Um, this one in particular is the Koa concert. Koa from the top, back, and sides. It features a abalone rosette. Nice gloss finish and the signature Romero Creations uh, headstock. And yeah, it's a great ukulele strung up with his Loji concert set. And overall, a sweet sounding youth. Yeah, you forget it's a concert size. I know. It's crazy. Like, when we were playing earlier, I was almost, like, 
playing it like as if it was a tether yeah. like because it just feels comfortable I, I guess it has a lot to do with the size of the body so for me i'm someone that's used to to playing a larger scale or body instrument which typically is a tenor um in this case um i can actually hold it and play it very comfortably and i almost don't notice that the scale is shorter <laughs> it feels a lot like a tenor yeah very much so um i know with the pepe romero uh, creations um normally you would find like a, a, a slightly wider you know nut um, which is comfortable for me especially with the extra space you get, it adds more comfort. I mean, it has a voice that's like a tenor. Yeah. Crazy. And this one is going for about 8, eight 19. 19. Yeah. So it's like incredible. It's deal still got the relaxed is. tension of a concert. Yeah. Now, yeah. So I mean, you can kind of feel kinda, it. Kind of. It's slightly easier on your left hand. So this is great. I mean, if like you're a tenor player and would love the sound of a concert and you, you know, for some reason, if you're like me, you have a hard time finding one that is comfortable for you to play. This is something you might want to consider. I feel like, you know how there's the grand tenor? I feel yeah. that it's appropriate that this is the grand concert. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's what we first thought when these came in. We was like, wow, is that a grand concert? <laughs> But that's it's the uh, just a standard Romero Romero concert. A little bit deeper too, right? Yeah. So it's it's, it's, it's uh, thicker depth. and and or and deeper in depth. Okay. I noticed something on that one when I pulled it out for this um, video and I got to adjust um, or take it off the website and take a few close up pictures because at the very edge of that headstock, um, Chris, see if you can catch. There's like a couple spots. Um, um, oh, it's like, I don't know, whoever the Finnish guy was uh, had some uh, chicken wing <laughs> grease on his fingers and touch the headstock or you know maybe some that that probably wasn't see. the case but like maybe, maybe it was a little bit of glue residue no 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 i because i think it's under the finish but anyways i'm gonna discount that oh, one. Oh yeah it is like a hundred bucks uh, i mean it's just really slight though i mean try 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 catch it but hold you gotta hold it still and uh, you won't catch it at that angle yeah 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 you can kind of see it there It it is really light but i mean we try to be super thorough, and then when we catch stuff like that that we can't fix because it's under the finish, um, then we discount it for cosmetic blemish. But it's still totally fine. The the finish is covering it, and it's gonna you know, 
it's going to live forever with just kind of a slightly different haze over those top two edges. Anyways, I don't, I don't know if that was worth the time, but <laughs> this is the very first ukulele to feature a chin rest. Oh yeah. <laughs> when you're mm. sitting at a seminar, you just. <laughs> oh, I like that. That's why. Brilliant. <laughs> we need to think about what chord is next. <laughs> when you're sitting at a workshop, you just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Perfect. No, but it's like with with this model, they're just like, where can we take away? What doesn't need to be there? Why is there space above the? <laughs> we just need this headstock to hold the tuners and nothing more. I mean, how lightweight of an instrument is this? It's pretty insane. They're awesome. All right, let's close out the night with some rebels. Rebels, I like their sound. I like the sound of them. Yeah, me too. It's a really nice they tone, great. you know. It's it's like you get that. You can hear the Koaloha influence. I mean, it just sounds good. Yeah, really good. Not just good. It's like really good. And like with with these, like the prices on these are pretty insane. Like this is the double cheesecake, which is a tenor scale mahogany. Back inside, spruce top. Two chords. That was, that was two chords on a scale. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Okay. It's now officially midnight. <laughs> oh, do you guys know that DJ Shadow oh, yeah. song? I don't know if I can figure anything out. Yeah. It's a good one though. What is it? Uh, triple. Gangster Lele type.
that was uh, two chords twice, you know, it was stacked. <laughs> was two times, was extra two chords. <laughs> extra two chords. It was a, it was a double a, chord kick. <laughs> that was G minor, F. That was just G minor, D7. flat. D7. <laughs> So, yeah, these rebels sound great. They sound great. Really, really good. I think these mango concerts are like really great value for what their price is. I mean, these ones are like nine ninety nine, right? Is that right? Yeah. Ooh, we almost we almost broke the deal for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> one that was dollar the threshold. Away. That's why we we saved this one for last. No tax. <laughs> No tax. If you're if you're buying from yeah, no tax to the government. <laughs> and if you come in the store, uh, Kalei will give you a polished cloth with it. <laughs> What's that? Free polished cloth in store <laughs> special. Should I go go first or? Yeah. Okay. This is the Mango Concert, and this is the Matt series, the first series they came out with had a gloss finish um this is actually fairly recent where they started doing the the satin or the matte finish on it and they're great um it feels like they're a little bit lighter and that helps with the overall warmth that it produces i love the whole mango line <laughs> it's as sweet as the the fruit that it produces. <laughs> well, oh, the tree at least. But you pretty much get everything, and the the pricing is even more incredible. It's right, right around seven hundred bucks. Oh, that's a steal. And you get really nice goto tuners. Not the the regular ones. This is uh the bell shaped goto tuners. I like those. It, they look really classy. It's like super vintage. Because I know it's like, like even some of the old like Martin ukuleles yeah. had those on them. Try that. Cause they're nice and the, the sound. Another concert that sounds like a tenor. <laughs> yeah, this is. So much pressure now. What the yeah. heck? <laughs> Does it sound like bring a it to a climax? <laughs> oh no! What am I gonna do? <laughs> so I have here the Rebel Double Cheese, and we've actually carried this model for some time. It's a really good wood combination of mahogany for the back and sides, and a really nice spruce top. And this one comes with a really nice gloss finish, some really smooth goto tuners, and I mean, we're all big fans of the Rebel sound. It sounds really nice and full, and everything you expect and more from an instrument that's under $1,000. All prices are subject to change.
<laughs> See details for Ron. <laughs> the, the following proceeds go to... <laughs> My bank account. <laughs> you call us so yeah, 2021 pricing. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Joel at the ukulele site. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, we got these and dozens of other excellent choices under $1,000. So check out the ukulele site.com or hit us up with a phone call or email to inquire. And mahalo for watching this, and we'll see you guys next time. Aloha. <laughs>